Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to scale your injectors, large or you know whatever size. Um, a lot of information is out on this on the internet. I you know encourage everyone to just take a look at the information that's out there. This is not going to go into that deep. Um, there are a lot of factors involved, but I'm just going to go over uh, real quick how I do it. Uh, the fastest way I've been able to do it, uh, fastest, safest way. Um, there are other unsafe way to do it, but uh, I'm going to tell you about my best practices. So this is on the Quicksilver Evo, which is a SD tune, and I have FIC 2150s. Right now, I think they're the second largest or third largest uh, injectors you can buy in the market right now, and they're very common. Uh, for builds, uh, typically anywhere above, I think, six, 700 horses, people use these injectors. Um, I have read that where people have uh, issues with them, um, they don't get the idle well, it's not stoky or, or whatever. There's a lot of factors involved, and I'm going to try to explain what I think um, some people are going through and reading from the forums and how I get around those issues and just general how to build a really good base map so you don't really have to go through all that. Um, and then you can really pinpoint right away, uh, you know, what the issue is because you only left a few variables in there. So um, as you can see, there's two tape, two ROMs in here. This is the uh, stock ROM that literally you can download and whatnot unmodified. And this is the ROM that I have built. There's another a video of mine on how to set up SD. So if you can just go through that. Um, but I'm really quick. What I've basically done, I'm going to show you how to do that. Compare these uh, highlighted in blue is literally what I just changed just to get my base ROM going. Um, this one, I've scaled it to my map sensor. This is five bar. If you have an Omni four bar, you just you know go through Omni four bar and scale it. Um, again, watch the other video. And this I start with eighty five percent because I have a stock car. Typically, you could do eighty percent VE at idle, uh, and uh, you could do more if you need or less. But I start with eighty five percent. Also, if you have an IAT, uh, you got to switch this uh, on. This should read 03, so you would be using an IAT, and then I've scaled my IAT according to um, whatever the the uh, scaling was. It, it keeps changing the scaling, but it, this is this is what you're supposed to use, and then you'll see all the errors disappear to be smooth. Um, so just remember, just go here, edit map and then switch this to temp scale usually on my for some reason it says temp 8 but it's supposed to be temp scale um and that's been working fine and what else did i change i changed this but it's not related these are the tables that's going to be affecting your your tune um two byte to one byte uh, it's a stock turbo uh, so i set it to the ratio 1.3 uh, if you need, if you're going to run a high boost, I would set it higher. Now, the biggest parts, these injectors, you can find a lot of information on them on on uh, Evo M or, you know, the manufacturer's website or other forms on how to, you know, set the base scaling. So injector latency, to explain what this is, in each injector doesn't react instantly, right? It, so it... If it waits for signal from the ECU, it'll be waiting those milliseconds and you'll run very lean. So it needs to know how long that those signal gaps are uh, or how reactive the injectors are. Uh, typically, you want to you know, have large injector with a smaller gap, uh, smaller injector, this number should be higher. I know for a fact that this is the correct I would say nine out of 10 cars, this works for 14 voltage. So at 14 voltage, the minimum, uh, the dead time they call it in between uh, pulsations is this. So it compensates for that. 
Um, this will heavily, heavily control your idle, what your AFRs read at idle. And by the way, if I'm making a mistake in explaining all this, uh, somebody feel free to correct me because I'm really not a, a real good, I guess, a tutor or whatever, but I know how to do this stuff. Um, anyway, so this is the scaling that I use. Each injector has their different scaling. You would look for it in the internet uh, or at the injector data sheet. It's a starting point. This is not, you have to adjust it based on the car. So I've set this to whatever I know is the best. Um, and then you would just fill in the information based on whatever information you have. This is a starting point. So don't worry just to get the car going on idling. The second thing you wanna do on this map is um, on these, because they're such a large injectors, this is the minimum pulse width these injectors will ever go below. So it will not go below one millisecond of pulse width. And this is how long the injectors stay open. Um, so other injectors, different brands, different whatever, they will give you the data for this. Best thing to look it up on the website or you know look on the forums. Um, I know these work very well at one, so I set it to one. In order for you to use this table, there's another table um, that's the stock one, because as you can see, this is very granulated. Um, the stock table is not this granulated. So in order for you to use this table, you just click on these three things and you switch them from uh, 0x4908 to these numbers on all three, and the computer will basically use this table instead of the stock one. The other thing I also do is I smooth the math compensation out. Usually this this part, as you can see from, let's see, let me see if I can show you, um, is a bit different. Um, this is what, what the thing came with, but I just wanted to smooth it out. The smoother, the better. Um, and we'll come back to this table a little bit later. This is a very important table. Other things I have done, this is for warm up. I just added a uh, little bit of fuel to uh, my startup. These are large injectors. I don't know what it's going to react, so I add fuel. I can always take it away. Closed loop uh, long term uh, trim control. I'm going to leave this open, but we will come back to it. And the TPS Delta. So this is basically how much uh, fuel it adds during. Uh, throttle changes, not like wide open throttle and whatnot, but tip in, they call it in other systems, but sudden throttle changes, how it would throw in fuel without any other calculation just to, so it doesn't go lean because the injectors will take time to react. Increasing these numbers, add more fuel during throttle changes, decreasing these numbers will add less fuel, obviously. And I'm assuming, and because I don't know, this is not uh, defined, I'm assuming these are different rates of throttle. So I just do uh, changes for all of them. What else did I change? Uh, we'll get to boost later. High octane fuel map. Just make sure this part is good. When it gets to real tuning, we will cover that. Uh, this, These tables and some of the other tables are the same. This is post prime uh, decay. So when does it actually start following um, the ignition fuel i'm sorry the high octane fuel map so this this table basically after you crank the car at these temperatures it'll add percentages of fuel to this table it's a multiplier so after uh 122 fahrenheit uh, coolant temperature this will just use this value as raw before that it'll add these percentage to um this table so that's a, just a rough explanation. Also, your idles, you know, start high as you, you know, dial the car in. You could get lowered if you like. Um, ISV, I would, that's the uh, idle stabilizer control valve. And I always start with these values higher. I rather have it, you know, high and then work your way down. Um, as what the car likes. Let's see, what else did I change? All right, ECU peripheral. Um, 
I had to disable the uh, immobilizer because I don't know what it is, uh, the front O2 heater. I am using, and this is a very important thing, I'm using an aftermarket O2. I do have two O2s, an OEM and an aftermarket one. Uh, I just uh, put the aftermarket one to compare um, what it does to prove a point. Um, we'll get back to this. So this aftermarket O2 sensors do not, you typically have a built-in heater for the O2. Uh, why does this matter? We will come back to it in a bit. What else did I turn off? Uh, okay, the rear O2, I don't have one, so I turned that off. Um, you also want to turn off the lean spool. I think the the stock uh, ROM comes with the lean spool already turned on. Okay, lean spool. What this basically does is the stock uh, Evo uh, ECU, in order for it to help spool up, runs one AFR lean uh, when during the spool area, and you don't want that. You want it to control it on your own. So disable it by sending it to zero. Um, and a few other things, I, I do turn off the uh, light, not, uh, not, what is it, the uh, timing pullback on knock and things like that. Um, that just causes issues. So I, here, where is it? Timing, knockdown, and light acceleration. I I always keep it on zero. Um, also enable warm up retard timing. I also leave it at zero as well. I just control it through the uh, other tables. Okay. Um, and finally, the injector scaling number. Now, this is debatable. Um, this is widely used for these injectors 1624, but you do want to start a little bit richer or leaner. Um, if you want to start with 1624 for, you know, because you know it works, it's fine, but it might not work for you. This is not written in stone. I've run cars that are 2.0 that had to be run on, you know, 15 something, uh, and then other cars 17 something. But 1624 scaling is generally what works. Um, and you cannot, this, this is not that granulated as I mentioned before. So let's see, 1650, as you can see, it doesn't go, the scaling doesn't exist. 1675, see, it goes to the next number. So you're stuck and you have to play with other tables to make up for those uh, lack of uh, scaling. So you got the injector and I'll start up. Um, this is the injector cranking IPW main. I reduced it to half, whatever the number was before. Let me show you what it was. And for me, half works. Um, you could lower it even more, it'll work, but I leave it at half, it works. Okay, now this particular table, closed loop, long-term uh, field trim controls. So this controls when it goes into different uh, fuel trim calculations. So you have four different, uh, three different uh, trims. Low is when you're idling. Mid is what the trims it uses for cruising and high for wide open throttle. And this literally controls when in math hertz, um, it, it sees, uh, this number and it'll use the calculation for, you know, whatever trims that we're talking about. So when the math hertz, even on SD, is still calculating through the hertz as a, uh, I guess, a virtual one, but just think of it as load. When it sees 62 load, it'll go from low trims, which is idle, to mid. So it'll start calculating for cruising if it crosses 62. And then when you're down, you know, when you gear down, uh, if it goes below 50, it'll start using the, the idle fuel calculations uh, and it'll switch from cruise to idle for when it goes 50 load. So that's basically a rough way to just think about it. The reason why this is important because if you have this set too high, uh, say like 100 and during cruising you're never reaching 100, it'll always use the idle uh, uh, calculations for fueling and vice versa. So this is very important. Usually you wanna raise or lower these numbers uh, in 
in sync. So you have very high cams or larger cams and you're idling at 1000 plus or 1100. You want to raise this a little bit, you know, together like that. So it'll, you know, calculate for your higher loads at, at idle or whatnot. Um, so mine was at what something like this. Okay. So I did up it a little bit. This is not stock um, because I'm idling at 1000 RPMs. I typically try to idle at 1000 RPMs. All right. So now you got all that stuff going on. Again, this is, uh, I'm not really getting deep into this, um, but to scale your injectors on SD, it's a lot easier than it is on MAF cars, MAF. Uh, I wouldn't say easier, but it's different. You have to do more things on the MAF thing, MAF uh, equipped cars. But um, it's all doable. Once you get the hang of it, it's it's pretty easy. Well, just annoying, but pretty easy. The second part to this, once you got your car running and it's idling and whatnot, um, you need logs. How are you going to change your base injectors and whatnot? And I pulled the calculator up just to show you if you don't know the injectors, what to do. Say you got 2,000 injectors, there's no data on them. Use 30% of this value to calculate, to use as your base scaling. So 30% of 2,000 will be... Okay. Use 1,400. Uh, you can also use 25%. A lot of people use 25%. So 25% um, of 2,000 CC injectors, okay, that's 1,500. Um, and that's a good start. Your car will turn on. It'll run a little rich, but it'll be all right. Now you got the car running. Everything is good. You do need to log things. What do you log? So on Evo 8, um, obviously throttle position, engine RPM, loads, you need that. So that uh, load factor that you saw before has to match this. I put a 1.3 in the ECU flash. You have to put 1.3. Whatever it is in ECU flash, you have to put it here. Knock some. You're not going to go into boost, but it's just a habit. It just stays on uh, for me. Timing, obviously, you're going to log your uh, map sensor. There's an Omni 4 bar here, too. If you have an Omni 4 bar, you need to get the equation. Search online, and you'll see it's there. Omni um, 4 bar, AFR map that the ECU is using in the table, injector pulse width, injector duty cycle, battery level, um, uh, MAF air temperature, basically your air temp that you have it plugged in. If you don't use this one, you have to use some, you know, the other one, the air temp uh, right here. You can use this one. If you are using the coolant, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, fuel temperature instead of the air temp. Coolant temp. Um, that's good to know because if your car doesn't warm up properly, it's not going to go into closed loop system, which is using the front O2. And you want to log all the fuel trims. Uh, you don't have to use high, but I'll just leave it on just to see if it gets into there. Um, and then in use, some people log this too, see how fast it's reacting, if the O2 is doing something. But instead of logging this one, uh, I actually log the O2 voltage directly there you go oxygen sensor voltage now when you're recording this and you see that the voltage is stuck and your air far gauge is moving there might be something wrong with your o2 and it might it will actually cause all the issues in the world and you won't get fuel trims or anything like that and it'll throw a check engine light so you should definitely check that uh, so these are basically what i am logging for just to injector scaling um, one other thing that I want to mention was if you're using an aftermarket O2 sensor that's not OEM, it does take longer for it to heat up and start reporting to your ECU properly. It'll throw a sign that the front O2 is inactive or the heater circuit is down. If you see your AFR gauges, wideband AFR gauges rich, that means that it hasn't been warmed up. You'll see once you start driving and the, the O2 is heated up properly, it'll start getting more close to stoke hill. So it's very hard to do this if you're not you know, knowledgeable or you don't have experience with particular injectors 
to know where it should be and you have an aftermarket O2. Um, anyway, so after this, what you do is you flash the car um, with your you know new ROM, you dislocate your you disconnect the battery. That is how you reset the fuel trims um, and reconnect it, and all these should read zero. To describe what fuel trims are, um, low fuel trim is long-term fuel trim is, is what the computer learns how to get to Stokio, uh, taking away or you know taking away fuel or adding fuel from your calculations to reach Stokio. Um, the mid one is the cruise for the same thing in long term. I think it's like 22 cycles. I, I don't know exactly what it is. But it's a consistent uh, driving and driving around town, cruising, that the computer will ultimately learn um, what to do when it, on top of your calculations for fuel to get to Stokyo. So what you want to do, the, the goal of this is get to close to zero as possible. Usually in the industry, um, you know, anything, you know, five plus or minus is acceptable. I personally like to go for a you know negative below negative five, so between zero and negative five. I don't ever want a positive. That means it's going to throw my uh, actual fuel tables off, and I am stickler about that. I, it's an OCD thing, um, so I always try to keep it in a negative trim uh, where the uh, ECU is always pulling fuel instead of having to add it. So that's what negative means. If you see negative, that means it's too rich, and if it's positive, it's too uh, too lean. So I actually did a log. So you basically go drive around for 15, 20 minutes, uh, let it calculate everything, and then basically take a log of you, you know, cruising, and then it took a log of you idling. So let me show you what that would look like. Uh, let's see where, where, where is it? So usually it's saved in documents, evil scan directly. I haven't changed the directory yet. Uh, documents, evil scan, save logs. Okay, so these are the field trims. Based on these logs, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do your calculations for field. Now, just say, um, I know I took a look at my logs, they're okay. All right, so these are the field trim. This is field trim low, uh, medium, high, and it's what is in use out of these three right now. So field trim in use. Um, let me delete some stuff so it's easier for everyone to see. Uh, okay, these are not important right now. All right. So let's freeze top frame um, so you can see what's going on. All right, so I took a took, took the car for a cruise. As you can see, the RPMs are, you know, whatnot. Um, I've addled it before as well. Normal driving, as you can see from the RPM and the load, my cruising load, as you can see, is around 40. Um, let me see if I can show you. So, around 40 load cruising around here uh, is where I'm doing all my cruising okay very important to know and then this is the RPM uh, usually I'm cruising from here to here uh, I'll show you why that matters in a bit and then my fuel map I am around here uh, cruising, so that's all good. So I'm cruising along. Let's see what the inject the ECU is doing. So the ECU is not doing anything at the moment. Um, it did take a little bit for it to come. Okay, so there you go. In use is is fluctuating. That's because I'm driving around, you know, like up and down, going through car so but as you can see um my constant long-term fuel trim is already in and it's using the cruise the mid because look at my rpms it's 2700 and i'm steady right steady everything 
and it selected this field trim to use and it set the long-term field trim mid which is cruise to negative 3.3 and in use basically is uh, the rapid calculation is doing this is basically an average of this this is the long term this is what short term it's doing now let's see if this changes uh, when I come to a stop and we'll know because the field trim low which is idle is 2.9 negative which is pretty close nothing 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 that there you go I think I stopped here let's see the RPM yes so 900 RPM um, which is idling I'm um, at a red light most likely um, and it's using this so it's safe to say that my field trims are negative 3 and negative 3 it's a you know the, the cruise is a little bit richer slightly than the idle which is fine for me um, I will take that this is a good set to uh, I guess tune with yeah um, as you can see towards the end the more I drove everything became even my idle even changed to everything the same uh, which is the, you want now if your fuel trim low which is idle and your fuel trim uh, mid which is cruise does not match a um, couple of things you can do you will need this this is last ditch effort um, so let's start with what I do when they don't match now let's pull this up and uh, the injector scaling all right so you got your fuel trims and your idle um, fuel trim let's just change it to cruise And your fill trim idle just for so it's easier. Now this matches if yours don't match, say your fuel trim cruise is very positive. It's not this number. Um, it's um, say it's what should we say it is? Uh, say it's five. Okay, say it's positive five. Well, it's not gonna actually have a plus sign, but say it's positive five. Okay, and this is negative. What do you do then? Well, positive five means during cruising, this this uh, injector is having to the ECU has to add fuel on top of your fuel injector um, scaling to meet Stokio. If it's positive, this ECU is already adding fuel, what you have to do is you lower the scaling to make the ECU think your injectors are actually um, smaller than they are. So you go to the next one, 1574, I don't know. Yeah, okay. So what this will do is, you, well, after you change it, you flash it, you reset the battery, you have to do this all over again, you have 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it takes. And say uh, now it's negative, um, okay? But this is too negative because you've written this so much and injector scaling really affects um, both trims um, and it tends to affect the both trims almost even, but the idle uh, even more. Um, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but say this is very negative, you did that, um, it came out to negative 10. What do you do then? Now, luckily, um, the idle, I'm sorry, the battery latency at 14, you know, uh, voltage where you're idling, this affects the idle a lot more than it does your cruise trim. So if you uh, lean this out, by leaning this out, I mean you lower it to, you know, uh, any number. And you do this test again, you'll see 
that your cruise wasn't really affected as much, but your idle really got leaner. And that might offset it enough for you to do um, do your uh, trimming. Now, again, this is, again, I am roughly, there's other things you can do. I'm sure you can look it up, but this is the way I do it. Couple of other things I wanna mention. Uh, if you don't have to, if you can avoid playing with uh, the math compensation, this is large uh, calculations. What I mean by that is one digit on this will do more adding or taking away fuel than the other tables, uh, any other table. So if you wanted to lower this to 96, it'll take away a lot of fuel maybe too much for you to be expecting it. So I leave this alone, I just make it even and I play with everything else and usually it works. At the end of the day, um, your injectors might be bad, uh, a couple of sensors, um, they are pretty, there are injectors that are tough to scale out there. That's why I try to go with, and I also recommend my customers to go with injectors that is proven and it's known. It's nothing about your skill level or whatnot. Why would you have your tuner fight to scale something, uh, you know, to work properly? Now, there's a lot of things you can say. Yeah, you can get around it if you're a good tuner. Yeah, that's fine. But you're still a good tuner is fighting to scale one injector more than the other. Why not make it easy on yourself and go with reputable injectors? Spend the extra money. Now, that's basically what you have to do the most annoying thing is uh, it's a 20 to 30 minute cycle every time you do a fuel trim change of those tables you have to reset the battery you have to go on 20 minute drives to make sure this comes in properly uh, and then make your calculations again it's pretty annoying i it's annoying for me i don't like doing it um but you have to it's part of the thing it'll make your uh, tune a lot better if you take the time to scale your injectors properly. A properly like this, properly scaled injector um, will yield good uh, AFRs on even wide open throttle because your scaling affects it. So this, I've done wide open throttles on this car. Um, it's pretty much following my table almost exact, um, which is great. I'm not running that much of a boost anyway. Um, there are some other tables that affect it, but those are the main tables that you want to use and stay close to. And uh, that's basically it. Repeat, and the more injectors, different types you uh, scale, the easier everything will get for you. And that's basically it. And thank you for watching. I have, I hope I have helped someone. Um, and keep subscribing leave some notes and what else you want to see. This was a, one of those requested videos on how to scale injectors. Um, I will try to do one on the AEM Infinity. We are getting ready to actually tune the uh, the Red Ninja and um, we're getting close to it. I just got to break it in and then I'm really going to show you guys how to get the fueling right so you don't have to fight it uh, on the dyno and whatnot. Again, and all this stuff it has to be done well, I, it doesn't have to, but I per personally prefer to do it on the street and not uh, the dyno. I put the dyno, uh, the car on the dyno at the last minute when I need to make, when I need to see the power ba because I'm, you know, upping the timing and whatnot. Um, and then verify my findings and make sure my tune is everything is all right on the street after the dyno is over. I hope I help someone. Uh, at least one person will make this uh, video worthwhile. Thank you guys for watching, um, more to come.